Thanks everyone. My name is Hunter. I just wanted to uh, take a quick moment before we get things rolling uh, to offer an opportunity for us to come together and do a short smudge ceremony, uh, as well as a quick prayer for those interested. Um, if that's not you, you don't have to worry about it. This isn't mandatory. Um, but the reason um, why we're doing a smudge ceremony and, and the reason why we typically do this um, is to seal out the negativity in our lives, to seal in the positivity. We also smudge to invite our ancestors, those on the other side who we love, to come sit with us, to help us and guide us do whatever it is that we need to do. And uh, we also smudge to really uh, take a moment to uh, reflect and intention set about what we're doing and why we're doing it, and what are the values that we wanna have guiding us. Um, so that's a little bit about why we smudge. Now, how we smudge, it's gonna differ based off of uh, the person that you're learning from or that you're smudging with. Um, it's gonna differ based off of community, off of the, um, the environment that you're in, and it's gonna also differ based off of the family that you're smudging with. Um, what I, for, so for example, um, some uh, folks use different medicines. Um, others use uh, very specific medicines. Um, some say that you know you should take off your glasses or your jewelry um, to smudge. And others say you know when you're smudging, you should really make sure that you're standing on the ground while you're doing it, standing up. Um, what I've been taught in my family is that sincerity is the highest form of prayer. So that's the thing that um, that they really wanted to get across to me. Um, as well, I've also been told that your glasses and your jewelry, that they're part of who you are. And I've also been told um, that you should use whatever it is that you have around you to connect in a good way. So that's whether or not you have sage or other medicines available, just using what you can, um, really taking that, that sincere moment to try to connect. That's what's most important. So in just a few moments, what's gonna be happening is I am going to be lighting um, this bit of sage right here. So this is um, the sacred medicine that we're gonna be using. Um, and what's gonna happen is you're going to see a little plume of smoke come up and uh, that's gonna be our smudge. Now in that, um, that smoke that you'll be seeing, that's kind of that symbolic cleansing that we're gonna be using, that clarity. And it's also our connection to the creator and to all things. And that's how our thoughts and our prayers are gonna go up to the creator, to that spirit world. Um, so that's just what's going to happen. And then you're going to see me going through um, particular motions. I'll probably take my glasses off. Um, but what I'll be doing is I'll be essentially bringing that clarity to my eyes so I could see good things. And I'll bring that clarity to my ears, to my mouth, to my heart. I can bring it over my body for overall health. And if, even if I want to, I can put it over my legs, you know, to ask to be on the right path in life. Um, so there are so many different ways to do this. There is no wrong way to do it. Um, so I encourage those who do know how to smudge or you know, who are doing it for the first time to really take that moment to do what feels right for you. If it's just a, a quick smudge to the heart or wherever you need it, that's what, uh, that's what you need to do. Um, afterwards, I will be saying um, a short prayer um, and, then, uh, and then we'll get things rolling. So um, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna light that sage I'll do a quick demo so you can get the sense of what to do. And then I'll hold it up to the camera so you all can, um, as if I'm holding it right in front of you, um, pretend like that smoke is there and you can bring that smudge to yourself in whatever way that feels right. So I'm super stoked, let's get started. Um, you'll see I'm using a lighter. There are different ways uh, and different teachings around um, what's appropriate, what's not. I've been told that a lighter is fine. Some people say, you know, use um, matches or whatnot. Um, so I'm just using that. And uh, let's get started. Awesome. So I usually take my glasses off just to uh, smudge them so I, can, uh, so I can see really well tonight. Amazing. So now I will hold it up to you all at home so that you can smudge if you want to.
Wonderful. And now I'll say uh, just a short prayer. And once again, I invite everyone to pray in whatever way is comfortable for you. Um, as well, if you if you would not like to pray and you just want to take this moment to center yourself, do some breathing, um, kind of reflect on, on why you're here and, and what you're hoping to do, I invite you all to do that. I want to call in the ancestors uh, from the other side and the creator to come sit with us this evening to help us celebrate with our hearts and our minds open, to remind us to be giving thanks for um, all the wonderful gifts that we have in our lives, uh, those continuing to do a incredible work um, to make this place that we live in um, a, a clean and pure uh, and sacred place to live. Um, I also want to call in uh, the, the ancestors of, of the treaty signatories on, on both sides, the indigenous and non-indigenous um, ancestors that came together in that spirit of peace and friendship and taking care of one another um, to kind of help remind us of what it means to be a good treaty person, um, to be taking care of each other through that spirit of peace and friendship and not just um, to be taking care of, of people but to really be taking care of all of our relations, our non-human relations as well, which is the plants and the animals and the environment around us. So I wanna call that in. And I also wanna give thanks to everyone who is joining us. Um, it is such a pleasure to, to, to come together um, in that spirit of celebration. So hi, hi, kenanas komatan. Awesome, we'll see you all shortly. Welcome to the 30th Annual Emerald Awards. Here is your host, Hunter Cardinal. Tanse, everyone. My name is Hunter Cardinal, and I'm so happy to be your host for the 30th Annual Emerald Awards. This is our 30th year of gathering together to lift up the stories of those in our community who are making the world that we live in a clean and beautiful place. The theme of all of these stories is the knowledge that this work is not just for their communities, but for everyone who calls this place their home. The accomplishments of the 30th Annual Emerald Award shortlist and recipients reminds me of what knowledge keepers in my community have told me about the root word of Canada. In the Cree language, they told me that the word Kanatan is the root of Canada. That word kanatan is often used to describe something that is clean and pure. So for me, these awards celebrate who we are and what we pursue to be as Canadians. Those that are in the process of making this a clean, pure and wonderful place and world to live. Before we get things rolling, you can follow along on our digital program, which can be found on our website, emeraldfoundation.ca or in the virtual exhibit hall technology. I love it, nice. As well, did you know that this event offsets the server energy used? Once again, technology, it's so cool. We partnered with Green Shows, who plants trees, to offset the carbon footprint of this event. Uh, we have also eliminated the need for travel and catering, plus people from around Alberta, the country, and the rest of the world are all watching this webcast from home. So I'd say that this is a more sustainable and accessible Emerald Awards and is probably one of the few silver linings of this pandemic. This and that more people know how to make sourdough bread. Anyways, uh, throughout the event and afterwards, be sure to share your Emerald experience with us by using the hashtag ABEmeraldAwards2021. Now, let's quickly run through how to use green shows. First, if your video is getting cut off within the Green Show's screen, head up to your Zoom functions in your web browser and play with them until you do. You may need to zoom out. Also, full screen is not an option. Next, 
to the right of your screen, you will see icons that say sessions, attendees, chat, and questions. For our purposes today, we will only pay attention to attendees and chat. If you want to comment to everyone in the audience, simply click on the chat and write your message. To have a private chat with a particular participant, hover over the display image on the attendees section. Select direct message. Any participant can choose to accept or decline the request for a private chat. The question function will be disabled during the presentation. If you have a direct question about the platform, please direct message David Betke. Before we officially get things rolling, we'd like to share a short message from Mark Brostrom, Alberta Emerald Foundation Board Chair, and Gregory Caswell, our Executive Director. Over to you two. On behalf of everyone at the Alberta Emerald Foundation, welcome to the 30th Annual Emerald Awards. I'm Gregory Caswell, Executive Director. And I'm Mark Brostrom, Board Chair. Thank you for joining us for this special celebration of Alberta's environmental achievements. We would like to take a moment to acknowledge and honor that we operate on Treaty 6, Treaty 7, and Treaty 8 territories, of which we have been beneficiaries since their signing. We extend our hands in peace and friendship to all Indigenous peoples who have made these places their homes since time immemorial. We are grateful for the journey we are on as Treaty people, with a responsibility and opportunity to carry forward and renew the spirit and intent of those agreements, to learn, to grow, to celebrate this journey of discovery, and to share our stories as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the rivers flow. We call forward the spirit of Tatawa, which in the Heiwewen means welcome, there is room, to guide us as we do our part to make Alberta a more welcoming and sustainable place to live for all. We would also like to welcome the dignitaries who have participated in the Emerald Awards this year. Be sure to read their greetings in your digital event program. Alberta is home to leaders and innovators, each demonstrating a unique approach to environmental stewardship. The Emerald Awards showcase those who raise the bar in addressing local, regional, and global environmental and climate issues. In doing so, a standard of excellence is set that inspires others in their own practices. While we are celebrating the Emerald Awards shortlist and recipients tonight, we are also celebrating a monumental landmark in our foundation's history, our 30th anniversary. The Alberta Emerald Foundation has come a long way over the past 30 years. In 1992, then Minister for the Environment, Ralph Klein, McLennan Ross LLP, and Deloitte and Touche created the Emerald Awards to recognize our province's environmental leaders. While their intention remains the same, the celebration has evolved from a gala to a theatrical production to the online streaming version we're presenting today. The Emeralds remain the only environmental awards program in Canada that celebrates excellence across all sectors. Over our three decade history, we have recognized the achievements of just under 400 recipients and over 900 finalists through the Emerald Awards program and are excited and honored to welcome tonight's shortlist and recipients to that legacy. Our foundation has expanded its capacity over the years as well, with programs that showcase, inspire, and empower environmental achievements, share best practices, and contribute positively to the conversation of climate change and other environmental matters. We have firmly established our role in our province. We are Alberta's environmental good news storytellers. In honor of our 30th anniversary, the Alberta Emerald Foundation engaged in a community consultation to refresh our categories and nomination form. A big thank you to those who participated in this process with us. The result is a more relevant, robust, and inclusive slate of categories that represents the inspiring environmental work taking place in our province. The Emerald Award itself also received a refresh. In place of a trophy, our recipients now receive a certificate and a digital logo, profile in our sharing stories content, and a $2,000 grant to support the continuation of their important work or to donate to an environmental charity of their choice. We would like to say a big thank you to our sponsors who have made this possible and who have supported our mission throughout the years. Make sure to take a tour of our virtual sponsor trade show. We would also like to thank our donors and volunteers, past and present, who have given tirelessly of their talent, time, and money to our foundation's success. 
and I raise a glass to our Emerald Awards judges who volunteer upwards of 100 hours each and every year to review all nominations. They consistently rise to the challenge of selecting our shortlist and recipients. We are always looking for new volunteers, so please reach out to me if you would like to join our team. With that, we hope you will enjoy the show and look forward to connecting with you at the virtual networking event afterward. Thank you so much, Gregory and Mark. Hi, hi. I'm now honored to share with you all greetings from our esteemed dignitaries. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Alberta government, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 30th annual Emerald Awards celebration. The Emerald Awards are a great way to recognize environmental leadership and innovation across Alberta. The organizations and projects that will be featured here today are playing a key role in protecting Alberta's environment and supporting economic growth at the same time. This is very important work especially as environmental sustainability becomes more and more important to Albertans. Environmental issues can be complicated and require teamwork and creativity to solve. And I know that the individuals, businesses and organizations joining this virtual event today are passionate about achieving this balance. Please know that your work not only benefits Albertans and our environment, it also inspires others to follow your lead and do their parts. Preserving the environment and ecosystems while also growing the economy is a big job and governments cannot do it alone. That's why the Alberta government is proud to support the local businesses and everyday Albertans whose hard work ensures Alberta's land, air, water and biodiversity continues to enrich our province. The Emerald Awards are the only environmental awards program in Canada that celebrates environmental leadership across all sectors, from government institutions to nonprofit organizations. And I believe this recognition is important. Your ability to bring forward practical solutions to our environmental challenges continues to inspire all of us. I think you'd all agree that these are complicated times we are living in. The COVID-19 pandemic, has presented all of us with new challenges, including how to best achieve a balance between environmental stewardship and economic recovery. Now, more than ever, it is important to leverage the best in environmental practices and work collaboratively on research and innovation to strike this balance. Thank you to the Alberta Emerald Foundation and all of tonight's sponsors for making it possible for us to gather virtually to recognize some of Alberta's outstanding environmental achievements over the past year. Congratulations to all the nominees and thank you for your hard work and commitment to the environment. Well, hello and welcome to the 30th Annual Emerald Awards. Tonight is a celebration of ingenuity, creativity, and the true belief that we can create a stronger, better future for ourselves and for future generations. City of Edmonton, has taken a strong stance on climate change and is working every day to reduce greenhouse gas emissions here in Edmonton so that we can ensure the world's climate does not increase more than 1.5 degrees C on average. We've created a carbon budget, approved a revised energy transition strategy, and are focusing on more sustainable transportation and buildings and car alternatives, all to create safe and sustainable ways of living here in our community. Now, we can't get there alone. We need the commitment of everyone in our province and your creativity, which is why tonight's awards are especially important. So not only do we get a chance to see the tremendous work our friends and our neighbors are doing, these awards also have the potential to spark new ideas, to ignite new partnerships, and even to inspire others to get involved. And so I'd like to thank the Alberta Emerald Foundation for their commitment to celebrating excellence in our province, and for finding an engaging and fun and safe way for us to gather still tonight. So as well, I'd also like to congratulate all of this evening's nominees for their outstanding contributions to sustainability and their environmental achievements. You have so much to be proud of. And finally, thank you to everyone who's gathered and supported tonight's event. Enjoy the ceremony. Hello, I'm Nahid Nenshi, Mayor of Calgary, and I wanna welcome everyone to the 30th Annual Emerald Awards. You know, for 30 years, the Emerald Awards have been helping highlight stories of environmental excellence, stories of Albertans 
who are doing great things to steward our land, our air, and our water. And in this time of climate change, of environmental crisis, that work is more important than ever. But the thing that makes the Emerald Awards special is not just that they tell these stories and we all go, wow, what great stories, what great people, but actually that we are all inspired to take action in our own lives and in our own organizations. Government can't do this alone. All of us have to work together in order to improve the environment. And that's really one of the reasons that I love the Emerald Awards so much. Now, on a personal note, this will be my last chance as your mayor to talk about the Emerald Awards, but I hope that we build on this 30 years of legacy together and that we all continue in our own way, in whatever way we have, to be excellent stewards of our national natural environment for now and for future generations. So welcome to the Emerald Awards. Congratulations to the nominees and to the winners tonight. Thank you for doing everything you do. And I hope that all of us are inspired by your incredible example. All right, let's start things off with our legacy categories. These categories celebrate an organization or individual's legacy of environmental excellence in addressing and mitigating the effects of local, regional, and global environmental issues. Hello, I'm Joanne Curry, Director of Grants and Community Engagement at Edmonton Community Foundation. We are pleased to participate in the Emerald Awards to celebrate the importance of environmental stewardship. Our environment and the land we live on connects us to our histories. Through stewardship and environmental sustainability, we can protect our environment for generations to come. We are excited to present the business category, which showcases an organization engaged in commercial, industrial, or professional activities that demonstrate a meaningful commitment to an environmentally sustainable future. Here are those shortlisted in this category. Business, presented by the Edmonton Community Foundation. Integrated sustainability. Celebrating 10 years of promoting the sustainable management of our most precious natural resources. Integrated sustainability is a specialized international project integrator for water, waste, and renewable energy infrastructure, servicing all sectors. YYC Growers and Distributors. YYC Growers is a farmer-owned cooperative that provides Calgarians with a weekly subscription to a box of locally grown vegetables, either for pickup at a nearby location or delivered right to their door. They are dedicated to pioneering new ways of working and organizing to create healthy, local food systems. Future Ancestors Services Incorporated. Future Ancestors Services is an Indigenous and Black-owned, youth-led professional services social enterprise that advances climate justice and systemic barrier removal with lenses of anti-racism and ancestral accountability. Through an intergenerational team of professionals and advisors, this Alberta-based enterprise provides speaking, training, research, consulting, and social media services internationally. Thank you, Joanne. And the award goes to YYC Growers and Distributors. Congratulations. To accept the award, please welcome Rod. Rod, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can, loud and clear. I can't see you, though. Yeah, that, uh, what was I supposed to, oh, there it is. Hey, Hello. there you are. Congratulations. It's so good <laughs> to see you. Yeah, Thank please. you. Yes, so good to be here. And uh, calling in from Treaty 7. And I just want to say that uh, we humans, we can live regeneratively. Um, it's now. It's not time for sustainability, my friends. It's time for regeneration. We need to kind of repair the earth uh, by the activities that we do. I was so so elated to be part of this this crew of people. Um, and yeah, it's it's clear that we can reverse global warming. We can. Oh, sorry about that. We can replenish the water cycles. We can rebuild fertility. And how do we do that? Simply by eating three meals a day. And so when you eat food that YWC growers 
farmers have grown, they're dedicated to repairing the environment, uh, which means that that uh, nutrition is built in the food. Uh, we, we begin to address kind of some of our obesity issues, our like chronic disease issues, um, just by, by eating vegetables that are now becoming uh, medicine. Um, yeah, so, so super stoked um, to to have been. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm a little flabbergasted, as you can tell. <laughs> and and yeah, invite anyone to uh, to kind of join us. One of the exciting things that that YWC Growers is doing uh, heading into 2021 is is creating a baseline of our soil data uh, metrics, so that um, anyone that it, you know joins us, signs up for a subscription box, can follow along. Uh, and see year by year how we are improving uh, the soil metrics. Uh, scientists now are, are, are soil scientists in particular, are now finally getting the stage at uh, climate change events. Um, typically, I guess they call it the soil scientists lament, where if you have a 15 minute presentation, 14 minutes is climate scientist, one minute is, uh, is hydrologist, and the soil scientists never get the stage. Uh, but but now it is the time for the soil regeneration. Um, and I mean, everybody probably in this audience knows that the UN said that we've got 60 years of farming left. And so YWC Growers is dedicated to make sure that we've got generations of farming into the future. So thank you so much and uh, great pleasure to be here. Hi, hi, thank, hi, thank you thank so you much. So Congratulations much. once again. Thank you, Hunter. Wonderful. Next, the community group or nonprofit category will be presented by Michelle Velez, the Manager of Environmental Affairs and Regulatory Compliance at Syncrude Canada. Over to you. Hello, everyone. I'm so pleased to join you today to announce the nominees for the community group or nonprofit award. Over this past year, we've seen many changes in the way that we live and work. But even though COVID-19 pushed the pause button on many things, it didn't sway people's focus on issues that matter, like environmental protection. All of our incredible award nominees have continued their important work through these challenging times. They've been an inspiration for many Albertans through their efforts to raise the bar in addressing local, regional, and global environmental and climate issues. For this reason, Syncrude is proud to partner with the Emerald Foundation in advancing their good work. This year, in fact, we're funding the Emerald Educational Engagement Youth Grants Program, which supports youth-led environmental projects here in Alberta. As we continue to work responsibly to provide the energy that Canadians need, Syncrude gets a lot of inspiration about what can be achieved through the stories of Emerald Award recipients. It's especially true in this category. The award for community group or nonprofit recognizes associations that have demonstrated a significant commitment to the stewardship of Alberta's environment through their actions. Each of these organizations succeeds in building awareness, taking action and advocating for a social cause. They are environmental leaders, and I thank them for all their hard work and contributing to a sustainable future. Here are the shortlisted nominees in this category. Community Group or Nonprofit, presented by Syncrude. Solar Alberta. Solar Alberta has provided public education about renewable energy and energy efficiency for 30 years. Over that time, they have transitioned from a largely Edmonton-based club of solar enthusiasts to a province-wide hub connecting the general public to solar installation professionals. Pioneer Trail North Foundation. Pioneer Trail North Foundation helps young people connect with nature. As hosts for the Outdoor Classroom Program, they have welcomed students along with teachers and parent volunteers to enjoy activities ranging from educational nature walks to responsible outdoor recreation and survival skills. Water Movement. 
Water movement fills a void in an often fragmented industry and bridges the connection between indigenous water treatment operators whose work is vital to the health and well being of countless communities. In addition to providing resources and an interactive collaboration zone for those in the industry, they seek to raise awareness among the next generation of water leaders. And the award goes to Solar Alberta. Congrats to everyone involved. To accept the award, we have Daryl Kaminsky. Welcome, Daryl. Hello. Hi, Hunter. How are you? I'm doing so good. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate the award, the honor. And uh, thank you on behalf of all of Solar Alberta to the Alberta Emerald Foundation. Um, we acknowledge our very worthy competitors in this group and their work. Uh, I'd also like to thank our board of directors and staff, current and past, for helping us get to the, through this difficult year. As a result, though, uh, we've been holding a lot more online events, including the annual solar show that was completely online this year. And I share your experience now with pulling off one of these large events. It's a lot of work, so kudos to your crew. And um, I'm happy that we can now spread the word of solar uh, across the entire province. You don't just have to live in one of the major cities now because all of our events are going to be reaching far and wide. And we look forward to seeing even more of these solar rays on homes and businesses and community projects in Alberta in the future. Thank you again. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Our education category highlights the brilliant work to educate all ages of students about environmental excellence. It's also a reminder that the future is in very capable hands. Presenting this category is Lori Koble, the Manager of Communications of ABCRC. Lori, over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Lori. I'm here from the Alberta Beverage Container Recycling Corporation. Some of you may know us better by our acronym, ABCRC. Delighted to be here again this evening at the Virtual Emerald Awards as a presenting sponsor. And we do this because in addition to environmental and economic sustainability, social sustainability and stewardship are really key to ABCRC's focus. They establish recycling programs, um, support community initiatives. These all provide local employment opportunities. And it's these three pillars of sustainability that create the foundation uh, that supports APCRC's overarching goal of continually improving beverage container recycling rates in Alberta. But if we dig even deeper into that social sustainability piece, placing focus on supporting education, particularly youth education, really aligns with ABCRC's goals to teach our youngest Albertans about the importance of caring for the environment and the communities that we live in. So <laughs> with all that being said, it's our utmost pleasure to be here this evening and present the education category which acknowledges those that have raised the bar by showing leadership and creativity in educating students of all ages about environmental matters. Here are those shortlisted in this category. Education, presented by ABCRC. Building a community, Vincent Massey Junior High School, working hand in hand on the land in both Morley Community and in Calgary. Both Vincent Massey Junior High and Morley Community School have become better advocates and pro-environment supporters. This has led to community gardens and environmental clubs that support student-led ideas and innovations. EcoVision, Lacombe Composite High School. EcoVision grows student leaders through student-led projects. Everything they attempt needs to enhance the environment, education, and their community. Evergreen Theatre Society. Evergreen proudly offers curriculum-based musical theatre touring shows and artist-in-residency programs for schools, as well as custom workshops, presentations, and activities for conferences and organizations nationwide. Thank you, Lori. And the award goes to 
Lacombe Composite High School for EcoVision. Accepting the award is Steve Schultz. Please welcome Steve. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Mr. Schultz. I'm the teacher of the uh, and the mentor for EcoVision. I'm going to turn it over to my students. Welcome, welcome. The floor is yours. Is Taylor on? Uh, I can't hear anyone okay, just yet. We have uh, two. Okay, we'll just get um, Harika to go next. Go ahead, Harika. Uh, um, my name is Neha, and I'm in grade 12 here at Lacombe Comp, and I participate in promoting environmental education and youth involvement in climate policy making. Um, hi, um, hi, everyone. I'm Harika, and I help with EcoVision's micro business program and volunteer at the greenhouse. Land acknowledgement. We would like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory and we recognize all the many First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and non-First Nations whose footsteps have mar marked these lands. F Fifteen years ago, Mr. Schultz uttered this phrase to a Science 10 class. Words without actions are meaningless. This phrase evoked a passion inside Kiana Rudolphson and a group of her friends. Uh, uh, a group of her friends at the Lacombe Compton High School to so that uh, to start an environmental club, club called EcoVision at LCHS with the goal of taking our school off the electrical grid. The vision statement they wrote has allowed student leaders like me to develop over a dozen projects that improve the environment, enhance student education, and collaborate with the community. These projects include a, developing 6.0 kilowatts solar system, a Four Seasons Renewable Tropical Geodesic Greenhouse, an edible forest with 175 fruit trees, and 50 raised garden beds, an urban beekeeping technician program, an aquaponics system capable of raising 300 tilapia fish, an outdoor classroom with birdhouses and pollinator gardens, and our newest project, which is a goat garden called a living roofs called Roofs for Kids. Because of these inspirational, courageous leaders, LCHS has been able to offer students a robust agricultural program, greenhouse technician courses, micro business opportunities, beekeeping technician courses, permaculture design course, and a new GOAT animal husbandry program and therapy program. We stand here today to accept the Emerald Award on behalf of all students who work and are working on projects that have transformed their lives and created a better future for the environment and our community. Now I'm wondering if you can accept Taylor. She's uh, isolating it. If we could get the individuals to accept Taylor, or we are not able to do that. Uh, I'll see. Are we able to bring Taylor on? I think we have some some folks in the background and, trying to do that. And then Jasmine as well. Uh, oh, perfect. Go ahead, I Sneha. see Taylor. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Also, Jasmine yep. should be online as well. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I think also... when Jasmine. Yeah, when when yeah. when Jasmine shows up, we'll we'll let her right in. Amazing. Good to see you. Okay. So I'm Taylor and I um, run the micro business and I'm a part of the beekeeping program here at the high school. Um, so the impact of sponsoring and showcasing projects like ours is very powerful. In 2010, a fire broke out on the roof of our school, destroying EcoVision's newly built 6.0 kilowatt solar sy system project. Um, so while the school was burning down and there was a group of students or a majority of the students were on the football field and they were cheering as the school was burning down. However, a group of students known as EcoVision stood at the center circle with Mr. Schultz with tears and concern in their eyes as their new project had been destroyed. It was at this moment that Mr. Schultz realized the impact that these projects have on students and that they really do care about making a difference in the environment and in our community. Thus, the students decided to rebuild the project and have coined the term, out of the ashes we will rise, which we use to inspire our projects to this very day. We're very grateful for this award as it acknowledges all the outstanding environmental achievements my fellow students and our volunteers have accomplished. 
It encourages our partners to continue to invest time, wisdom, and money into youth programs like ours, and it inspires other students, schools, and groups to start initiatives of their own. The students from EcoVision would like to congratulate the other two educational finalists, Vincent Massey Junior High School's Building a Community and Evergreen Theater Society Discover the Fine Art of Science. These initiatives have shown exceptional leadership and creativity in educating all students of all ages um, about environmental matters. The more schools that introduce environmental matter programs, the better prepared our youth will be in constructing a healthy future and achieving our goals in reducing the negative environment. Amazing. And I think we have uh, Jasmine. Jasmine, can you hear me? Mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two, mic check. I believe I can see you, Jasmine. And you're getting lots of love from our audience. We're sending a bunch of emojis, which is amazing. Yeah, see, there's more. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'll just, because yep. uh, she's having internet problems, I'll just fill no in. Um, I'd like to thank our uh, incredible sponsors and community partners that have made this possible. Um, we have quite a list of people. And we would also like to um, say thank you to the Alberta, Alberta Beverage Containing Container Recycling Corporation, or ABCRC, for sponsoring this award. We're very, very grateful for that. As you leave today, remember our youth are wanting more than just words. They are looking for opportunities to take positive actions. This award will inspire a new generation of youth to take action. Some students choose the path well-traveled. EcoVision students choose to make their own path and leave a trail. Thank you again for this prestigious award. We are so honored to represent the youth of our own club, but also the youth of the club. Oh, we can hear you now, Jasmine. It's Hello, too late, Jasmine. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your wonderful yeah, words. Congratulations. This is so well deserved. We weren't talking. No, you can't. Amazing. So we will continue on. All right, let's give them just a little bit Jasmine, more love I help from the emoji Brad. world. Yes, I can hear you guys. Okay, perfect. Great. Yes, Jasmine, please. The floor is yours. Congratulations. Why did you reload it at the top? Load it? I am. I can't. Okay, no worries. We're having a little bit of technical My name is Jasmine, and I help with grant writing, and I wrote the Watershed Project essay. Thank you to our major partners, Wolf Creek Public Schools, Olds College, Berman University, Perfect. All right. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us as we uh, we exist in the world of uh, digital communications. Sometimes that happens, but I'm happy to uh, get us back on track. So once again, congratulations, everyone. Uh, really incredible work. Continuing on this train is our youth category, a category filled with youth who are making incredible changes in the face of environmental degradation, economic recessions, social injustice, and a global pandemic, and an onslaught of millennials trying to understand how to use TikTok. Presenting this award is the city of Edmonton's mayor, Don Iveson. If there is one thing I know for sure, it's that the youth in our city and in our province are just as entrepreneurial, creative, and ambitious as the rest of us and that they will lead the way forward with confidence to that more sustainable and environmentally friendly future, which is why the city of Edmonton is proud to be the sponsor of tonight's youth category. So I wanna make sure our city and our province is the kind of place that attracts young people to live, to work and to raise their families. And to do that, we must take intentional steps towards smart environmental policy. And by the looks of the youth who've been nominated here tonight, we are in extremely capable hands. Youth category recognizes people 25 years of age and under who have made a meaningful contribution and have taken positive action to improve the environmental health of their community. 
And here are those who've been shortlisted in this category. Youth, presented by the City of Edmonton. Plant Forever. Plant Forever was founded in 2017 by young environmentalist Marmik Patel when he noticed a potential for urban forest development on private property and decided to take action. He established a system for tree planting where homeowners register and volunteers plant at their home. Plant Forever also launched a multi-platform campaign to raise awareness about the climate crisis and plant trees, raising the awareness of over 2.2 million individuals globally. Plant Forever hosted 25 tree planting events across Edmonton, involving over 100 youth volunteers. Lives with Less Plastic, Jade Jansen. When Jade was bothered by the amount of single-use plastic that is used by individuals in Canada, she decided she was going to do something about it. Lives with Less Plastic is a youth-led environmental nonprofit organization which aims to educate people about their environmental footprint and provide resources and help them reduce their individual and collective environmental footprint for a more sustainable future. Thank you so much, Mayor Iveson. And the award goes to Jade Jansen for Lives with Less Plastic. Congratulations, Jade. I do believe we have Jade joining us. We'll give Jade a, a few moments. Oh, yeah, I see. I see ya. Nice, we'll keep the applause going. I love it. Hello, Jade, can you hear me? I can join, oh, here we go. Hello? Hello, hello, congratulations. <laughs> Any chance that um, this can be done on Jennifer Jensen's computer? Oh, that's Sorry. a great question. No <laughs> worries. Uh, can we get Jennifer Jansen's computer um, accepted through? Okay. Yeah, there we go. I see Jennifer Jansen. There we go. Oh, we have a little bit of feedback. Okay, perfect. We got it. Hi. <laughs> Well, um, sorry about those technical difficulties. Um, so I'm Jade, we're joining from Treaty 7 Land. It's an honor to um, be accepting this award. Being a small youth-led environmental um, nonprofit organization in Cochrane, we never thought that we would have been, be able to get this far and be here tonight. Um, so there are many people I'd like to thank for helping us along this journey. I'd like to thank my mom, Jennifer Jansen, Executive Director of Alberta Tomorrow, for always being by my side and pushing to make pushing me to make change in our community. I'd also like to thank Allison Laidlaw, my grade seven teacher and coach that sparked the creation of Lives With Less Plastic. Thank you to all the other people that have helped us along um, my way from teachers to community members. I would also like to thank Zoe and Alex for joining us here tonight for becoming the first members of Liz With Us Plastic and being so helpful and supportive in getting this organization off the ground. Um, we've definitely come a long way since me starting in grade seven, um, having a dream and wanting to make change in my community, to being a youth-led environmental organization with lots of youth willing to make change in our community. Um, we've definitely had some struggles along the way from recruitment to getting many people involved as possible, but it's all been worth it. Of course, the pandemic didn't really help that. Um, but even though this year has been virtual, been, we've been able to do over 25 school visits all around Canada and have big plans in the future to helping Bow Valley High School get um, with sus integrated sustainability, create a solar project, to creating more t-shirt bag boring stations around Cochrane, and creating a group for elementary and middle school students wanting to make environmental change in their community. I remember going to the Emerald Awards two years ago in Edmonton and just thinking, wow, being getting there there would be such a dream. So many things have changed since then, and I'm so thankful that we were be we are able to be here tonight. Thank you so much. Hi, hi, thank you so much. But wait, 
there is more. Because there were so many incredible folks in this category, and the Alberta Emerald Foundation believes in supporting youth who are pursuing environmental stewardship, we have a very special additional $1,000 grant for the runner-up in this category. The recipient is Plant Forever. Congratulations to all those involved. This is courtesy of the Emerald Youth Grants Program, sponsored by Syncrude Canada. Congratulations. This is so well-deserved. Now, both of these organizations are absolutely exceptional. And also, this is the only category where there will be a prize awarded to the runner-up. In this case, we couldn't not. As mentioned at the top of the show, for the past 30 years, we've had the distinct privilege of celebrating the achievements of environmental excellence of both large and small businesses, organizations, community groups, and passionate individuals. Let's take a moment to look back at the relationships we made along this important journey. I'm on set today with the Emerald Speaker Series, and I just want to wish the Emerald Foundation a happy 30th birthday. We at the Waterton Biosphere Reserve thank the Emerald Foundation for its past recognition of our carnivores and communities program. We use that, uh, the Emerald Award, to, to, to let people know about uh, environmental stewardship. When you use your bicycle, keeping the environment clean, we're, we're not shy about that. We use it in all of our materials, and I want to thank you for that. We're now more committed than ever before to make a positive impact in our work. We are a community and receiving the Emerald Award gave us the opportunity to share our program with a wider audience and to build our own community with other organizations as passionate about the environment as we are. Honestly, we need more organizations like you telling the good news stories of all of the amazing work being done in this province. Congratulations, Emerald Foundation, on 30 years of great work. Thank you for all the work you do uh, in advocating for the environment and for the practitioners that work so hard to realize projects and uh, bring people closer to their connection to their environment. I've had the absolute honor of hosting the Alberta Emerald Foundation's podcast, What on Earth Can We Do?, and produce the documentary series. And I can honestly say it has changed me as a person. Happy 30th birthday to the Alberta Emerald Foundation and congratulations on this amazing achievement and milestone. Being part of the board means so much to me. The work that this foundation does for our community and environment is outstanding. I wish the foundation a happy 30 years. It's been great watching you grow up. Happy birthday to you uh, and all of the wonderful people who have worked for and with the Alberta Emerald Foundation. We are very excited to support you and to continue to support you for many, many, many years to come. Wonderful. Thank you to all those that participated in the making of that video. That was such a treat. Um, we're now going to be diving into our project and initiative categories. These categories showcase the Albertan environmental ventures addressing and mitigating the effects of local, regional, and global environmental issues by achieving excellence aligned to current environmental priorities. To begin, our water category will be presented by Joanne Jameson from Jameson and Lauren Co. Joanne, over to you. Greetings from Jameson, Lauren and Co. Jameson, Lauren and Co. is a boutique law firm focused on environmental, indigenous and resource law matters. We are focused on advancing responsible and sustainable development in Canada today. We are proud to sponsor the Emerald Awards as we move forward together to transitioning to a cleaner, sustainable future, one that protects our natural planet and in particular water. 
The water category recognizes projects and initiatives that demonstrate excellence through the monitoring, management, and or stewardship of water and the watershed. Please enjoy getting to know the shortlisted candidates. Water, presented by Jameson, Lauren, and Company. Caring for the lake together. Pigeon Lake Watershed Management Plan. Where once Pigeon Lake was viewed as a cautionary tale for other lake groups, it's now considered a leader. 12 municipalities collaborated to develop a plan to diagnose and address environmental issues affecting the lake. The result is a plan that recommends action-oriented watershed policies and beneficial practices targeted for implementation by regional stakeholders. The Watershed North Saskatchewan River Monitoring Program A collaboration between Alberta Environment and Parks, EBCOR, the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance, and the City of Edmonton. Alberta Environment and Parks, EBCOR, the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance, and the City of Edmonton partnered to implement a modern and enhanced river monitoring program for the North Saskatchewan River. This network complements and enhances Alberta Environment and Parks' existing monitoring sites on the North Saskatchewan River, as well as contributes to their ambient monitoring network across Alberta. Data from this monitoring network informs research, planning, and activities from source water protection to aquatic ecosystem health management. The Bioengineering Demonstration and Education Project, City of Calgary and the Government of Alberta. The City of Calgary and the Government of Alberta have partnered to create a project that demonstrates how bioengineering can be used to improve fish habitat and stabilize erodible riverbanks. Their goal is to increase awareness and understanding of how soil bioengineering structures are built, what benefits they can bring to our watershed, and how they might be used to mitigate the impacts of future flood events. Thank you, Joanne. And the award goes to Pigeon Lake Watershed Association for Pigeon Lake Watershed Management Plan for their Caring for the Lake Together. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, Robert Gibbs will be presenting the award, or will be accepting the award rather. Welcome, Robert, can you hear me? I certainly can. I'm gonna throw a few slides up while I talk. Uh, we're absolutely delighted uh, to receive this award. It's, a, it's been a 10 year uh, uh, project for me personally. Um, wanted to thank the Emerald Awards Foundation and its sponsors and, and the uh, judges just to be shortlisted. Is, is a great uh, privilege. Um, my name is Robert Gibbs. As you heard, I'm, I'm today accepting as my, uh, in the role as chair of the Pigeon Lake Watershed Management Plan Steering Committee. I'm a retired volunteer uh, and a director of the Pigeon Lake Watershed Association. For 10 years, we've been working on this initiative, partnership with local and provincial organizations and individuals and funders uh, some of whom are on the call today. For a small, you know, environmentally focused organization, the Emerald Awards is an incredibly important recognition. So thank you for Emerald Awards for showcasing our watershed initiative. You know, um, th there's a num quite a number of outcomes uh, that, that have happened. Some of them speak to a broader Alberta audience. I just highlight two. One is we have in partnership with the uh, Alberta Low Impact Development Partnership, uh, developed a Alberta Clean Runoff Action Plan that's useful for all watershed communities and uh, for municipalities in general. We've been working with uh, a, a collaboration uh, in developing advanced remote sensing techniques uh, for uh, monitoring of lakes, and these also can be provided uh, uh, for other Alberta lakes. So working together is our, our theme, and you can imagine that it, as a ground up operation, uh, it takes a lot of effort and, and engagement to, to bring something like this together. Um, so uh, I have a lot of acknowledgements. Uh, first, you know, our, our municipalities, uh, they have supported and endorsed the plan. 
The leadership of the four Musquachese Cree nations have endorsed our plan vision and are working together with us uh, through a Mamawo working group. So thank you, Musquachese leaders, such as Chief Leonard Standing on the Road and Councillor Wayne Munias. Our funders and Healthy Lake partners, including all levels of government, that's federal, provincial, and municipal, foundations and NPOs, including the Alberta Real Estate Foundation, Edmonton Community Foundation, Nature Alberta Land Stewardship Center, Alberta Low Impact Development Partnership, to name a few. Um, next, you know, we have a, a regular steering committee that meets uh, monthly composed of a cross-section of individuals and organizations. And these include elected council members, uh, Pigeon Lake Watershed Board members, uh, Chamber of Commerce, our Healthy Lake Partners, uh, the Battle River Watershed Alliance, and the Government of Alberta. So I have a special shout out to Mayor Don D Davidson on your left, um, our Vice Chair, Summer Village Mayor, and citizen scientists who provides valuable insights and constant support. Thank you, Don. A big, beautiful go bouquet goes out to Erin McFarland Dyer uh, in the middle. Um, she is a watershed planner from the Alberta Environment and Parks, and we thank her for her wealth of knowledge and her deep commitment to this initiative. Erin secured a government of Alberta funding for and specialized expertise for the writing of the plan. And uh, the consultants uh, team that wrote the plan was MPS Municipal Cl Planning Services and CPP Environmental, and they did a wonderful job, highly recommended. Uh, next, a big high five goes to our current PLWA Executive Director, Catherine Pierce, who saw the importance of the plan, came all the way out to Alberta from Ottawa, and has given it her full attention. Thank you, Catherine, for your commitment and crafting this excellent award submission. Uh, and finally, um, I uh, raise a glass of wine, a toast to uh, our outgoing past uh, executive director, Susan Ellis. Uh, Susan uh, was a, as past CPAWS director and set aside her own corporate organization consulting practice to take on the PLWA and build this watershed plan from the ground up. Susan, your vision to uh, launch and energize our plan was a huge undertaking. Thank you, Susan Ellis. It was indeed, let me tell you, well worth your investment. We all appreciate it. In conclusion, feel free to check out our website at plwa.ca. If you see something of value or have questions, feel free to reach out to our current executive director. Thank you, the Emerald Awards Foundation. Thank you so much, Robert, and congratulations. Thank you. And now for a breath of fresh air, our air category. Sorry, I had to do it. Uh, to present, we have Calgary Mayor Nahid Nenji. The air category recognizes projects and initiatives that improve our air quality. And here are the nominees shortlisted in this category. Air, presented by the City of Calgary. Calgary Region Airshed Zone for We Care About the Air You Breathe through their Portable Air Monitoring Laboratory Program and the Purple Air Program the Calgary Region Airshed Zone is able to offer air monitoring to bring the Portable Air Monitoring Laboratory to the Bow Valley, High River Okotoks, Canmore, and the Chestermere Rocky View Corridors. Community-Based Air Quality Monitoring Alberta Capital Airshed Alberta Capital Airshed empowers local residents and organizations to be citizen scientists by hosting air quality monitors, the data captured tells a story of neighborhood air quality, which can be compared with other locales, contribute to our regional air data analysis, and connect with our school education and community outreach programs. Thank you so much, Mayor Nenshi. And the award goes to Calgary Region Airshed Zone for We Care About the Air You Breathe. Congratulations. To accept this award, we have Jill Bloor. 
Welcome, Jill. Can you hear me? Just taking a moment to connect. Hello. Oh, Jill, I'm having trouble hearing you. Think you may be on mute. New platform. It's a story of my life. Still can't hear you. Is this on? Is this on our side? We're just checking, uh, just to make sure that we're all connected over here. Oh. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Still can't hear you. It does look like you're on mute, though. No rush. We got time. Yeah, this is definitely our life. Uh, can you do this is, now? I can. You well, amazing. If, no, if it was me, <laughs> no, honestly, I, I, kudos for that. <laughs> there's a reason why I have an entire crew doing this. I would be, yeah, I wouldn't even made it on the line. So, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're a good team. On behalf of Kraz, I would like to thank the Emerald Foundation and their awards committee for this honor. Uh, I. I'm speechless, really, because I really was prepared not to win. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, at the Calgary Region Airshed Zone, we, our mission is to monitor air quality, analyze the data, and provide education and outreach programs to the entire region. We work together with the province, Alberta Health, and men, uh, pardon me, municipalities, industries, NGOs, and the public to create a safe airspace here in Calgary in the area. I would like to acknowledge the other airshed zones as we all work collaboratively to make sure that Alberta has the best air it can have. It is an honor to be recognized for the hard work that all the members, volunteers, and staff undertake to ensure the air we breathe is not harmful. Again, thank you so much, the Emerald Foundation. Wonderful, thank you, Jill. Congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. Amazing. Great. So I think we're going to be uh, covering land next. If we can uh, scroll back up to land, that'd be fantastic. No worries. We're just we're just sorting things out. Oh, I believe we. Uh, okay, fant fantastic. We're just sorting things out on our end. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we got it. So up next, we have the land category. Presenting this uh, land category, we have Patty Morris. Patty is the executive director of the Alberta Real Estate Foundation. Patty, over to you. Greetings from the Alberta Real Estate Foundation. Real estate, that is land and buildings, is key to Alberta's success. The foundation recognizes the importance of land to the prosperity of the province and the well-being of all Albertans. As the Realtors Code says, under all is the land. Our beautiful landscape and open spaces are unique to Alberta and a big reason why people want to live, visit and invest here. The pandemic has only highlighted how critical these are to our quality of life. For 30 years, the Alberta Real Estate Foundation has invested public funds in advancing the real estate industry in Alberta. This has included education, research, reform, and initiatives to support best practices and innovation in real estate, including land planning and management. The foundation is pleased to support the Emerald Awards on behalf of the entire real estate industry, including residential, commercial, 
and mortgage brokers, as well as condominium and property managers. This year's new land award recognizes projects and initiatives that demonstrate excellence in sustainable land use. The Alberta Real Estate Foundation is pleased to present the land award to the Glenbow Park Ranch Foundation for 10 years of grassland education. Land, presented by Alberta Real Estate Foundation. 10 years of grassland education, Glenbow Ranch Park Foundation. In 2011, Glenbow Ranch Park Foundation and Alberta Parks officially opened Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park to the public. Glenbow Ranch protects 3,200 acres of native fescue grasslands, and that is an active cattle ranch. For 10 years, they have worked tirelessly to educate visitors of all ages about grassland ecosystems. And the award goes to Glenbow Ranch Park Foundation for their 10 years of grassland education. To accept the award is Sarah Parker. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. Congratulations. Hi. Thank you. Are you drinking water between each of these? Because you got to talk am. a lot. <laughs> I am. You should, yeah, you should see the, the glass of water that I have. It's just good. steaming. Yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, well, I want to thank you and I want to thank uh, the Emerald Award Foundation for this award on behalf of our board of directors, our many volunteers and staff. This is a real uh, honor for us and marks a milestone of 10 years of grassland education and conservation at Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park. Um, I want to also take a moment to thank all our past staff and volunteers who delivered this program over the last decade. I'd like to thank Alberta beef producers who have been proud sponsors of our grassland programming for a number of years now. And most importantly, I wanna thank Alberta Parks because they entrust us with the work we do at Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park. Um, all the programming that we do, we have one goal and that is that each of the thousands of students we see each year, uh, each of the family members and adults who take part in our programming leave the park as stewards for these incredible lands of uh, rough, rough fescue grassland and the wildlife that live there and the biodiversity of grasslands. And so I will end by saying that conservation uh, is a cause that has no end. And so you may see us in another 10 years um, to mark another milestone of this incredible work that we've been doing. So thank you for honoring us tonight. And um, we will continue to do the work we're doing for a long time to come. Amazing. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. you okay, bye. We're now going to take a brief pause from awards for a moment and hand the stage over for some wonderful music. I know for me, I deeply miss live music. So I am so delighted to present this group of talented Albertan musicians who have been entertaining audiences for decades. Hopefully this can help tide us over till we can gather safely once again. Please welcome the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra who will be performing Vivaldi's Winter.
That was incredible. Oh my goodness. Thank you to the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. What a treat. And now that we're all feeling calm and whole again and like humans, uh, let's uh, just take a moment to uh, just thank everyone for that beautiful performance. And let's dive back into our awards. This year's energy category will be presented by Amelie Murphy, uh, environmental regulatory specialist from Yellow Bike Solutions. Over to you. Yellow Bike Solutions and Bioenergy Solutions is pleased to participate in the Emerald Awards because environmental stewardship is important to us. We are excited to present the energy category, which recognizes projects and initiatives that positively support the evolution of our province's energy systems. Here is the short list. Energy, presented by Bioenergy Solutions Incorporated and Yellow Bike Solutions Incorporated. Virtuoso Energy. To date, Virtuoso Energy has completed over 500 renewable energy projects in solar energy, EV charging, and energy efficiency solutions. They have also implemented corporate initiatives dedicated to its community and local environment. Charting the path to a sustainable future, Fort Chippewan Off-Grid Solar Farm and Storage, ATCO. ATCO and 3NE installed the largest off-grid solar and storage microgrid project in Canada, reducing the Fort Chippewan's reliance on diesel generation. This outstanding project showcases how industry and Indigenous communities can and should work together to develop alternative renewable energy solutions that benefit communities and the environment. Edmonton's Change Homes for Climate Solar Rebate Program, the City of Edmonton. This rebate program lowers the cost of solar panel installations for Edmonton homeowners. It helps ensure a smooth and convenient participation process. And the award goes to ATCO for charting the path to a sustainable future for Chippewan off-grid solar farm and storage. To accept the award is Melanie Bailey. Welcome, Melanie. Can you hear me? We're just connecting with Melanie. Or I believe, yes. Perfect. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much to the Alberta Emerald Foundation for this award. I would like to begin by acknowledging that I am situated on Indigenous land in Treaty 6 territory, land occupied, traveled, and cared for by Indigenous peoples since time immemorial to the present day. This place, the city of Edmonton, is a traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route of the Cree, Salto, Blackfoot, Dene, Nakota Sioux, and the Métis. The histories, languages, and cultures of Indigenous peoples continue to enrich our shared heritage. We acknowledge these things as a reminder that we are all treaty people, bound to one another by the spirit and intent of treaty. We are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. I am thrilled to be able to accept this award today on behalf of my fellow colleagues and ATCO to be acknowledged by the Alberta Emerald Foundation as a leader and innovator in the environmental and climate issues space is an incredible compliment and achievement. It is humbling to know that this foundation and these awards celebrate a level of excellence in environmental stewardship that is intended to inspire others. And my hope is that we always strive to influence change where it's needed. I also want to acknowledge our peers and others in industry who are doing incredible work to bring about environmental change and thus inspire us to always do better. At ADCO, we truly understand that a crucial element in continuing to evolve our business in today's environmental landscape is acknowledging the impact we have on the communities and regions where we work. Now more than ever, continued development of sustainable energy solutions and the prioritization of lower emissions is essential 
in moving forward relevantly. We also know there is still much work to be done in order to ensure that future generations are taken care of and important resources are protected. We don't take lightly that the work we do today is critical in meeting the inevitable challenges that lie ahead. And our pledge is that our commitment in developing clean energy solutions, fostering future environmental prosperity has only just begun. This award that we accept today is for a project that I am incredibly proud of for many reasons. The Fort Chagoan Solar Project is, I believe, a prime example of our ATCO values at work. Integrity, caring, agility, and collaboration are our core pillars and define who we are. We strive to embed these in our daily lives and the work we do each and every day. For those that don't know, Fort Chippewan is a remote community in Northern Alberta that prior to this project was exclusively using diesel fuel as a means of electricity generation. Together with Three Nations Energy, we were able to build and install an off-grid solar farm and storage project, the largest of its kind in Canada. I truly believe the success of this project is a culmination of the shared collaborative spirit of all who contributed to it. I'm particularly proud of the strong and meaningful relationships we were able to build with the Fort Chippewan community and our Indigenous partners, Three Nations Energy. It was a privilege and honour to collaborate with Three Nations Energy on such a monumental development, and I hope it acts as an example to others of how industry and Indigenous communities can work together to foster extraordinary outcomes. And to the community members of Fort Chippewan, particularly the elders and chiefs, thank you for your trust, support, and your wisdom. We could not have done this without your vision and commitment to bringing clean and sustainable energy to the community. As we had the privilege of working within Treaty 8 territory, I also want to acknowledge the traditional and ancestral territory of the Cree and Dene. We acknowledge the Métis settlements and the Métis Nation of Alberta, regions 1, 4, 5, and 6 within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. I am incredibly proud that we were able to play a part in bringing a new way of providing energy to this remote community and aid in reducing their carbon footprint. These types of collaborations show the incredible amount of change that is possible at a community level and is a sure indicator of what can and hopefully will be done in other communities, regardless of size and geographic location, in order to continue to provide green and clean energy solutions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melanie, and congrats once again. We're now at least three quarters of the way through our time together. And if you're wasted from celebrating from the comfort of your home, it's now time for the waste management category. <laughs> Presenting is uh, Blair Charlton Gallis, the president of the Beverage Container Management Board, and Ed Guggenheimer, the CEO of Alberta Recycling Management Authority. Over to you two. Hello, everyone, and a special hello to my colleague Blair over at the Beverage Container Management Board, or the BCMB as we all know and love them. Maybe we can do this again next year, Blair, and hopefully be in the same room. On behalf of Blair and I, we're excited to join you today and offer our congratulations to the Alberta Emerald Foundation on its 30 year anniversary. This is an incredible milestone, and we thank you for the 30 years of recognizing homegrown leaders and innovators who keep raising the bar and defining environmental excellence. Next year, Armel will be celebrating its 30 year anniversary, so I think we're in great company with the Alberta Emerald Foundation. We acknowledge all the finalists and their visions for the sustainability of our environments. Arma believes that supporting the creation of new products, processes, and frameworks is key to advancing Alberta's circular economy and underscores our vision of inspiring a future without waste. We are continually fostering research, business development opportunities to enhance and expand our existing recycling programs. We also continue to explore new ideas and future programs and incorporate rethinking, reducing, reusing, and recovering, in addition to the recycling programs we currently run. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Blair. Thank you, Ed. 
I too look forward to a return to normal and would like to thank Ed and his team at ARMA for their continued support and their excellent work. At the Beverage Container Management Board, environmental stewardship is the foundation of our industry. We would like to thank Albertans who embrace our vision of stewarding beverage containers to minimize their impact on the environment by returning over 2 billion containers to more than 200 depots every year. Through cooperation with and the commitment of our stakeholders, the BCMB regulates a beverage container recycling system that is efficient and innovative in its sustainability efforts. Innovation is vital to advancing not just the recycling industry, but sustainability projects and initiatives like those nominated for this year's awards. Innovation comes too from adapting to changing circumstances and environments, and we've certainly seen that happen in every sector this past year. We are pleased to co-sponsor and present the Waste Management category, which recognizes projects and initiatives that innovate the repurposing, reduction, and disposal of waste in an environmentally conscious way. Here are the finalists in this category. Waste Management, presented by Alberta Recycling. Change Toothpaste Incorporated. Change Toothpaste offers pre-packaged toothpaste tablets without the need for plastic packaging. They chose compostable packages to eliminate any traces of product left in the environment after consumption. Change Tablets also partners with retail locations that offer refill solutions to eliminate packaging. Styro Go Foam Recycling. Styro Go processes polystyrene waste, a generally single-use, hard-to-recycle plastic from residential sources, as well as furniture and appliance, technology, pharmaceutical, and even forestry companies across Alberta. There is virtually no other option for polystyrene recycling in Alberta for both residential and industrial commercial producers. Fundraiser Sales, Clean It, Green It Composting Systems Incorporated. Clean It, Green It Composting Systems collects local organic waste from Albertan municipalities and then donates it to community groups to support their fundraising efforts. Additionally, the program educates participants on the importance of composting and the beneficial impacts it can have on the environment. And the award goes to StyroGo Canada for StyroGo Foam Recycling. To accept the award is Robert Harrett. Robert, can you hear me? I certainly can. Can you hear me? I can, loud and clear. I can't see you yet. Okay. No worries. We're just finding that one. <clears throat> Here we go. Perfect. Hey, good to see you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, wow, this is uh, truly an amazing honor. Uh, I'd like to thank the Alberta Emerald Foundation for this prestigious honor. Uh, to be recognized among such uh, avant-garde organizations as Clean It, Green It, and change toothpaste who are tackling waste and recycling issues head on is truly to be in rare air. Uh, many great stories, uh, like many great stories, Stargo was started not by design, but almost by accident. Uh, most companies begin as an answer to a problem that's widely recognized. Uh, in the beginning, Stargo was offering a solution that many didn't realize was actually a problem. Um, so like many other groups and organizations being recognized today, uh, pioneering a trail is it's always a challenge. Uh, inventing a solution is hard enough, but when you have to invent the trail <laughs> to show the people that there is a way forward, uh, the beginning of the journey is always the most colorful. Uh, in five years, Starago has become the largest polystyrene recycler in Canada and the only mobile-based one in North America. The technology for recycling styrofoam and polystyrene uh, hasn't really changed for 20 plus years, uh, and the manufacturing is mainly based offshore. Um, because of our significant growth and scale up uh, and ability to offer a service across a, a wide geographic area for a very cost effective uh, method is um, enticing new technologies to come to market that will uh, hopefully in the in the near future allow styrofoam and, and polystyrene waste to be fully recycled domestically right here in Alberta. Um, 
Finally, it's the association of other such like-minded groups uh, being recognized here today that keeps Alberta uh, the can-do solution-oriented uh, free that for alive and well. Together, we will continue inventing the solutions that the rest of Canada and the world need for today and tomorrow. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. Wonderful. Our infrastructure category will be presented by Goodwill Industries of Alberta President and CEO, Dale Monaghan. But before we hand it over to Dale, did you know that Goodwill also generously sponsored this outfit? Yes. I got to go to Goodwill's largest store in Edmonton and find this very funky, fresh suit. So if you're looking for some great finds that positively impact your wallet and the environment, check out Goodwill. And speaking of, here is Goodwill president and CEO, Dale Monaghan. Greetings from Goodwill Industries of Alberta. Since 1963, Goodwill has been creating a positive community through the power of work and the dignity of a job. In 2019, we were so proud to have received an Emerald Award for sustainability in the not-for-profit category, continuing to build on a legacy of so much good. After 30 years, the Emerald Foundation continues to inspire and empower environmental stewardship. The infrastructure category recognizes environmental advancement in the ways we design, construct, and travel. Please enjoy this short video that introduces those shortlisted in this category. Infrastructure, Net Zero Renovations, Solar Homes Incorporated. Solar Homes Incorporated designs and implements plans for homeowners to get their homes to net zero, helping homeowners achieve their goals of emissions reductions, improved comfort, or reduced operating costs. This is achieved sometimes in a single dramatic renovation or faced over several years with a defined plan and achievable end goal. The Confluence. Located in the summer village of Waperus, Alberta, this unique environmentally regenerative residence is over 2,200 square feet and is one of the greenest homes on the planet. Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, Woodpecker European Timber Framing, and an Alberta family have partnered to construct a one-of-a-kind home that produces more energy than it uses, captures water on site, and creates a positive impact on its people and environment. Thank you, Dale. And the award goes to The Confluence. Peter Grawl, owner of Woodpecker European Timber Framing, will be accepting the award for this wonderful work. Good evening. My name is Peter Grawl, and I'm the owner of Woodpecker European Timber Framing, located in Canmore, Alberta. I'm here tonight, actually calling in from Germany to accept the 2021 Alberta Emerald Award on behalf of the entire project team. We are honored and absolutely thrilled that the Confluence has been selected as a winner of this infrastructure award. This project has been in the works for many, many years, and it's a combination of commitment patience and perseverance between Woodpecker, the SAID Green Building Technologies team and the Molnar family. We're leading by example in the green building industry and this showstopper home is like no other. This could and hopefully will be the first fully certified living building challenge house in Canada and the fifth in the world. And this is no easy one to achieve since the living building challenge is deemed the most rigorous green building rating system on the planet. All sorts of environmental matters have been addressed. Water, energy, waste, food security, building materials, indoor air quality, human and ecological health, social justice, equity, and more. The Confluence showcases that it is possible to be, to be environmentally regenerative in a remote northern location while remaining relatively affordable. We want to show that we have accomplished what we have accomplished and inspire others to reimagine their own projects, offices, and homes to further promote environmental and human health in our built environments. As the owner of Woodpecker European Timber Framing, I've built many, many sustainable 
homes in the last decade and a half and had plenty of experience going into this project. But let me tell you, this one certainly took it a couple of steps further. If you would like to learn more about our project, please visit theconfluence.ca or sate.ca forward slash living building or simply contact europeantimberframing.com. Our project team has constructed one of the greenest homes on the planet and it took on a combination of very special people to make this happen. A sincere thank you goes to all of our trades and suppliers and manufacturers that went above and beyond to take this project from aspirational to achievable. Kevin Gray Interiors, Denka, Cabinets, Four Elements Design, Big Hill Electrical, Back in Time Flooring, Mac Fans and Furnaces, Freshwater Plumbing, Peak Line Roofing, Green Light Power, Cascadia, Fenster, Kalesnikov, Structural Lamb, SciTech, and many more, just to name a few of the major contributors. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for your expertise and the support with seeing this project through. And on behalf of our project team, I would also like to thank Paul Hayek, our project photographer, Amelinda, Navan, Mark, Brett, Linda, and everyone in the community of Wipers, family and friends of the Molnar family, all of the state students who volunteered their time on, on this project, the funding and donations from NSERC, Alberta Innovates, United Nations Association of Canada, Eco Canada, the Clean Foundation, and Nora Sask Forest Products. Congratulations also to the other finalists and winners, especially to Solar Homes Inc., who was the other finalist in our category. Thank you, judges, for volunteering your time to evaluate all of the entries. And of course, thank you very much for choosing us as the winning project in the end. Thank you, Alberta Emerald Foundation, for all of the work that you do. And don't forget, small acts, when multiplied by millions of people, can transform the world. Thank you. Hi, I'm Caroline Saunders, British Consul General in Calgary. It's my great pleasure to send greetings to the 30th Alberta Emerald Awards. The UK is hosting the United Nations COP26 International Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland in November this year. It's a very significant event, a bit like the Olympics of climate change conferences. And it's where governments come together to agree to take action to try and keep global warming below dangerous levels. To keep global warming below two degrees or ideally 1.5 degrees, scientists tell us we should cut our emissions in half by 2030. That's less than 10 years away. And even with COVID lockdowns across the world and significantly reduced activity in 2020, global carbon dioxide emissions only fell by 6.4%. Whereas the United Nations Environment Programme estimates that the world needs to cut emissions by 7.4% every year for the next decade to prevent the planet from warming more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels, a goal set in the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. So we need to do more to reduce emissions than we did in 2020 every year. And that shows how challenging our target is. And when we talk about governments taking action, it actually cascades down to everyone taking action, provinces, cities, companies, universities, schools, all communities, because we're all consumers and consumption has a footprint. And that's why the Alberta Emerald Awards are so important. Those on the Emerald Award shortlist that we are celebrating have shown tremendous determination, passion and creativity in doing their part to reduce emissions and protect the environment. Their commitment and action inspires others. And we need all the ideas and action and inspiration that we can get if we're going to avert the worst impacts of climate change. To the younger generation, I say take up the baton. Last year, Generation Z became the largest generational cohort 
constituting 32% of the global population, or 2.47 billion of the 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth. It currently has $140 billion in spending power. So Generation Z has the power of choice in how they spend their money. Money talks, with Canada now ambitiously committing to reduce emissions by 40 to 45% by 2030. Action in the province of Alberta is even more important. So I congratulate the Alberta Emerald Foundation for their vision over 30 years in helping to tell the stories of those who are stepping up and making a difference, who can inspire and motivate others. Congratulations to the Emerald Award winners of 2021. And let us recognize the award winners from the previous 29 years. What an amazing legacy. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you, Carolyn. We're so pleased to have you participate in our celebration. To present the public engagement and outreach category is Kim Karen, CEO of Eco Growth Environmental. Kim, over to you. Hello, my name is Kim Karen, and I'm excited to present this year's finalists in the public engagement and outreach category, which recognizes programs and initiatives that educate and empower the broader public by teaching the necessary skills to make informed environmental decisions and take responsible action. Recognizing and celebrating environmental initiatives has been the Emerald Foundation message for the past 30 years. What may have seemed a far-sighted message all those years ago is now of critical importance. As we better understand the dangers of climate change, the fact is we must act immediately. There's no time to waste. Education concerning land use awareness, Alberta parks, or wildlife protection is individually and collectively important in the overall battle against climate change. However, understanding the urgency surrounding climate change is not enough. We need action. Targeting the broader public to take action is our best bet if we're going to achieve our climate objectives. There is a symbiotic relationship between the Emerald Foundation and the organizations in this category. Let me explain. As a two-time Emerald Award recipient with Executive Math Service and Eco Growth Environmental, I can tell you being an Emerald Award finalist will bring increased public awareness for your organization and the important projects that have brought you to the table today. However, your association with this process will also help spread the Emerald message within your organizations. Truly a win-win. We are also excited to sponsor the upcoming podcast series, What on Earth Can We Do? Where hosts Gregory and Colleen keep the Emerald momentum going. I encourage you to listen in. So without further ado, please enjoy this, this video that introduces the shortlist. Public engagement and outreach. Creating environmental literacy among Alberta's future generations. Alberta Tomorrow Foundation. Alberta Tomorrow's free data-rich online interactive planning tool is designed for students, teachers, and all Albertans interested in the future of our province. Originally created in 2005, this simulation tool introduces students to real-life decisions and trade-offs while building environmentally mindful citizens of the future. Defend Alberta Parks a community-driven project to keep Alberta's provincial parks protected. Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, Northern Alberta Chapter, Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, Southern Alberta Chapter, and the Alberta Environmental Network. With the help of thousands of volunteers and supporters from across Alberta, the goal of Defend Alberta Parks is to ensure the province's parks remain protected within the Alberta Parks system. Throughout 2020, the team worked to raise public awareness of the issue, address misinformation, encourage Albertans to write or call their MLA, and support other grassroots efforts. Wild Outside Youth Leadership Program, Canadian Wildlife Federation. By participating in this unique, inclusive, and flexible program, 
Young Canadians, including Albertans, experience opportunities for personal growth while developing and encouraging their own conservation ethic. And the award goes to Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, Northern Alberta Chapter for Defend Alberta Parks, a community-driven project to keep Alberta's provincial parks protected. To accept the award, yes, we have Keisha <laughs> Kerr. Welcome, Keisha. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Hunter. And as one of your former students, it's even more of an honor having you host this. It's so hey, awesome. hey, good to see you. <laughs> you too. Oh my goodness. Oh man, wow, this is this is amazing. Um, I guess I will go to my speech so that I don't just uh, go off the cuff here. My, I got my your back if you do. Like, yeah. Please, please, Keisha, go with the speech. <laughs> there will be no mistakes. We got this, but it'll be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Keisha Kerr. I'm the executive director of the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, Northern Alberta chapter. I'm joining you from Edmonton and Treaty 6 territory, but our team also lives and works in Treaty 7 and Treaty 8 territories as well. It is my great pleasure to accept this award on behalf of the Defend Alberta Parks team, which is composed of staff and volunteers at the Alberta Environmental Network, and the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society Northern and Southern Alberta chapters. I'd first like to say that we're extremely honored and excited to have been shortlisted for this award. The honor is even greater seeing the company that we're in with Alberta Tomorrow and the Canadian Wilder Wildlife Foundation. We're truly humbled to have been selected as, a, as the winner of this award, and we would like to commend all the shortlisted candidates for their incredible work in public engagement and outreach. And we'd like to thank the selection committee for re recognizing the work of all of our groups. As I mentioned, as mentioned, I've, I'm accepting the award for the Defend Alberta Parks campaign. This public advocacy campaign to reverse closures and removals of protections from 175 of our parks and recreation areas had a huge impact. First and foremost, because it was successful in preventing those cuts to our park system. But possibly just as importantly, it also had big social impacts in our communities. Over 23,000 Albertans participated in the campaign to voice their opposition to the changes. Those who participated ranged widely in background, socioeconomic status, their place within the political spectrum, and came from every corner of the province. Signs just like the ones behind me popped up all over the place. Most of you in the audience have probably seen these signs in your neighborhood. Because we, we began by focusing on specific ridings in Calgary, the signs were particularly abundant and densely distributed in that city. Everyone who saw the signs had confirmation that they're not alone in their support for our par parks. That resulted in a huge snowball effect. People suddenly felt connections and shared values with neighbors that they had never met and more and more people became emboldened to speak out. That collective voice made a definitive statement that Albertans love their parks and they will fight for them. We have been told by political scientists that the response to this campaign was unprecedented in Alberta's history. It's usually a struggle for conservation organizations in Alberta to get large numbers of people to speak out, but not this time. The campaign became so much larger than our core team of staff members who worked really hard to mobilize Albertans. Nearly 2,000 Albertans signed up to volunteer. It was not possible for our team to assign each of these people with a specific role, but hundreds of Albertans did receive roles, either doing mail drops or delivering lawn signs, and they put in hundreds and hundreds of hours across the province. Some volunteers worked many hours per week for months on end and stepped up to coordinate other volunteers in their communities. As momentum built and more communities wanted signs in their towns, volunteers stepped up to pick up stacks of signs from Calgary or Edmonton and take them to their own towns so they could join in as well. The response from Albertans received national media coverage as it continued to snowball. We could not have stopped the changes for, to our park system if it weren't for all of you, all of these volunteers. In particular, we want to mention Dick Willett by name. He worked day and night to get signs delivered across Calgary and beyond. 
His efforts have been described by Natalie Odd, executive director at the Alberta Environmental Network as superhuman. There are too many other extremely dedicated volunteers to mention by name, but from the entire Defend Alberta Parks team and behalf, on behalf of all Albertans who love our parks, thank you so much. Our team consisted of many staff members from each of our three organizations, but I would like to single out a few of them. First, the success of this campaign is in huge part due to the efforts of Natalie Odd and Jeff Wheeler at the Alberta Environmental Network. Natalie brought ground campaign, campaign experience to the team and threw herself into the coordination of the mail drops and sign deliveries and volunteer coordination in Calgary. And she ensured that it was up and running in other locations before letting go of those reins. <laughs> she didn't get much sleep during those months. <laughs> Jeff's excellent design and communication skills made the Defend Alberta Parks branding memorable and made the website an important resource for the public. You two and the whole AEN team are incredible and it has been so fabulous working together. Thank you. On behalf of Brad Clute, Executive Director of CPAWS Southern Alberta and the boards of directors of both CPAWS Northern Alberta and Southern Alberta, I'd also like to thank the CPAWS teams. In particular, Katie Morrison, Chris Smith, and Steve Donnellan's detailed knowledge on the legislation and history in Alberta made Defend Alberta Parks the credible resource on the issue. Steve, who is now the chair, board chair for, the, for Northern Alberta, had an over 30 year career in the Alberta environment and parks prior to retiring and joining our board. And that was a huge asset for this campaign. Becky Best, Burt Whistle, Hira Shaw, Sarah Nason, Tara Russell, Taylor Matten, and Jeff Wheeler made our public materials factual and engaging and made our many public events successful. Over a thousand Albertans attended these events and each time we received extremely positive feedback. Tara and Taylor also coordinated all the volunteers in Edmonton and the surrounding area. To all of you, thank you for all of your hard work and continued dedication to conservation in Alberta. We send you all virtual high fives and big hugs, and I look forward to giving each of you real versions of these in the near future. We hope that this campaign will continue to have an impact on environmental issues in the future through the inspiration that it has sparked in many Albertans to get involved and speak, to, speak out. We know that the fight is not over, the provincial government is planning to change our parks legislation in the fall. But through the Defend Alberta Parks campaign, thousands of Albertans have become extremely literate about the Alberta park system and are vigilant and at the ready to mobilize should parks be threatened again in the future. Thank you to the Emerald Foundation and the Selection Committee for this award. Thank you to Alberta Ecotrust, Make Room for Nature and many individual donors for funding this work. And thank you again to all Albertans who got involved. We are truly honored and proud to accept this award on behalf of all of you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Keisha. Congratulations to you and your team and have a lovely evening. Thank you, Hunter. <laughs> awesome. See ya. Next, our shared footprints category is legendary. This category has it all. Land and water stewardship, building shared knowledge, improving air quality, reducing land disturbances, and encouraging ecotourism. It's like the all-dressed chips of the Emerald Awards. Presenting this tasty category, please welcome Bev Yee, the Deputy Minister of Alberta Environment and Parks. Good evening, everyone. I'm Disbury Mayor Rhonda Hunter. It's my pleasure to bring greetings and congratulations to the nominees and recipients of the 30th Annual Emerald Awards. Extend an extra special congratulations to Happiness by the Acre, an area farm nominated in the shared footprint category. I wish you all, I wish you and all environmental stewards, leaders and innovators ongoing success as you move forward in all you do. Thank you to the Alberta Emerald Foundation for being Alberta's good news storyteller in showcasing environmental leaders in our province. We are thankful and appreciative that you showcase, inspire, empower, and recognize Albertans who bring awareness to environmental and climate issues and to achieve and display best practice in our province. 
Enjoy your evening, everyone. And thank you for your invitation to be part of this evening. Shared Footprints Award, presented by the Government of Alberta. Happiness by the Acre. Happiness by the Acre works on multiple fronts to improve soil health, water health, wildlife habitat, local economics, and improve quality and security within Alberta. Their core activity include ethical, humane, and low-stress livestock practices, extensive riparian and wildlife protection, a commitment to paying staff above living wages, a focus on perennial pastures, and more. Vermilion River Watershed Alliance for Vermilion River Watershed Restoration and Enhancement Project. In the spirit of shared environmental goals and collaboration, the Vermilion River Watershed Alliance worked with local agricultural landowners, municipalities, and students to enhance and restore over 20 kilometers of riparian areas along the Vermilion River, creeks, and tributaries, and 157 hectares of wetlands within the Vermilion River watershed. Participants proposed a variety of projects on their land that would protect wetlands and riparian zones. Thank you, Rhonda Hunter, Mayor of Didsbury. And the award goes to Vermilion River Watershed Alliance for Vermilion River Watershed Restoration and Enhancement Project. Accepting the award is David Barry. Welcome, David, can you hear me? I'm hoping you can hear me now. I can, loud and clear. You have a wonderful oh, good, baritone good. voice. Yeah, thank you. I'm overwhelmed. I'm trying to catch my breath here for a second. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, it's a very, very great honor. Absolutely. Um, it is an honor to accept the Emerald Award for the Shared Footprints on behalf of the Vermilion River Watershed Alliance. Uh, uh, to be selected for the prestigious award is, is very gratifying to all of those that were involved, not only to the board members of the Alliance, but uh, for those in support that we got from North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance as well. And in particular, the efforts of our uh, watershed planning coordinators, Mara Erickson and Michelle Gordy. The Vermilion River is located east of Edmonton in the Parkland Natural Region. It's a rural area dominated by farming. It's a prairie river system dependent on rain and snow primarily as its water supply. We'd like to also acknowledge that the Vermilion River watershed is situated on Treaty 6 territory, traditional lands of the First Nations and Métis people. So our alliance was incorporated as a nonprofit in 2015, and we have membership from the town and county councils, from federal and provincial governments, conservation groups, and the public. And we're guided by our goals and directions and actions that we put into our river watershed management plan. We believe we can reach our vision of a healthy and sustainable watershed by balancing the social, economic, and environmental needs of the watershed. Now, as one of 12 watersheds within the larger North Saskatchewan River Basin, our alliance is very closely associated with the North Saskatchewan Watershed Alliance. And in 2015, the North Saskatchewan Alliance obtained grants on behalf of our alliance from federal and provincial governments and the grants were focused on wetland and riparian restoration and enhancement. So in the spirit of shared environmental goals and collaboration, our Alliance worked with agricultural landowners, municipalities and students. And I'm pleased to say the required targets of those grants were met and surpassed. The activities that were mainly underneath this uh, river watershed restoration and enhancement project, projects um, were, as mentioned earlier, to try and conserve watersheds, to try and make the watersheds better. So I, I invite everyone to go to our website at vrwa.ca to view this project and its stories of stewardship. So today it's the project that is being recognized for its contribution to watershed conservation. 
the landowners taking action to enhance wetlands and riparian areas. In all, 16 riparian and 22 wetland projects were completed by over 30 landowners. And this resulted in the restoration and enhancement of riparian areas along 20 kilometers of river and streams and 157 hectares of wetlands. The implemented activities such as eco buffers, riparian fencing, off stream watering systems to keep cattle away from streams. And this means that erosion, cleaner water, and well established riparian vegetation, all of which contribute to the health of an aquatic ecosystem. So, without the tremendous participation of these landowners, this level of success would not have been possible. So I have to sincerely thank those landlords, landowners for, for bringing this award possible. And I thank the Emerald Foundation for this really great award and honor. Thank you. Awesome, thank you, David. And we have a little surprise for you. Mayor Carolyn McCauley from the town of Vermilion has recorded a video about your work. So let's take a look. Hi, my name is Carolyn McCauley, and I'm the mayor for the town of Vermilion. We're proud to be part of the Vermilion River Watershed Alliance, and especially our participation in the Vermilion River Watershed Alliance Restoration and Enhancement Project. This project was a collaboration and partnership with the many communities and counties, provincial and federal governments, conservation groups, and the public that live along the Vermilion River. This powerful collaboration has resulted in the restoration of our watershed and to be shortlisted for an Emerald Award is an added bonus. The Shared Footprints category recognizes those who exemplify land and water stewardship, build shared knowledge to improve air quality, reduce land disturbances and encourages ecotourism. Let me give you some history of this project. In 2005, the State of the North Saskatchewan Watershed Report rated the Vermilion River watershed as poor. And as a result, in 2016 to 2019, we completed 16 riparian and 22 wetland projects, resulting in the restoration and enhancement of the riparian areas along the river and the creeks. Working with the Vermilion River Watershed Alliance, we have been able to raise the bar to preserve the critical resource for future generations. This park was once the vibrant hub of our community with most of our seniors remembering taking swimming lessons in here and the beach would be filled on a Sunday afternoon. Well, with the efforts of the many communities along the upstream protecting this watershed, it is once again an attraction while adding economic value to this community. Today, this park is home not only to the visitors who camp here, the residents who live in this area, but also to the wide variety of birds and other wildlife, as you can hear. I invite you to experience the natural beauty of our area. Grab your kayak or canoe and paddle down the 6.3 kilometer lake. Get out hiking or biking on the 23 kilometers of trails and enjoy the flora and fauna that now thrive in the wetlands and surrounding parkland. Today, this park has been restored as a vital jewel in our community. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday to the Emerald Awards on turning 30 this year. It's because of these awards, we can showcase some of the standards of excellence and to inspire others to innovate and lead Alberta in environmental stewardship. Thanks again for shortlisting our project. Congratulations to all the great projects this year. You make Alberta a better place. And finally, the Lifetime Achievement Award will be presented by Gerard Murkowski, the Vice President of Health, Safety, Environment at Capital Power. Please welcome Gerard. Good evening. It's a great pleasure to be with you tonight, celebrating the 30th year of the Alberta Emerald Foundation and recognizing such inspiring commitment by companies, organizations, youth, and individuals to environmental priorities and climate issues. Happy 30th birthday, Emerald Foundation. Capital Power is proud to be the sponsor of the Lifetime Achievement Award. This category celebrates individual leaders who throughout their lifetime have made contributions of outstanding environmental significance. We're strong believers in innovative optimization and all of the above solutions at Capital Power. 
and the Lifetime Achievement Award, contributors put these words into action. They see a challenge, they jump in with commitment and innovative solutions, and they offer collaborations that benefit individuals, communities, and our planet. It is our sincere pleasure to introduce the Barrelman Inc., who received an honorable mention in the Lifetime Achievement Award category, and our 2021 award recipient, Pat Letizia, Executive Director of Alberta EcoTrust Foundation. Congratulations, and thank you for your hard work and inspiration. Lifetime Achievement, presented by Capital Power. An honorable mention goes to the Barrelman Incorporated, Dirk and Nanya Struck. The Barrelman Incorporated started as a pilot project 20 years ago after Dirk and Nanya decided to repurpose food-grade plastic barrels into rain barrels to reduce plastic waste and help organizations like Green Calgary to fundraise for climate education. Pat Letizia. Pat Letizia worked with Alberta EcoTrust Foundation for 25 of its 30-year history and led the organization as executive director and CEO for over 20 of those years. She has had many achievements as a leader, partnership broker, and advocate for Alberta's environmental nonprofit sector. And the award goes to Pat Letizia. Please welcome Pat. Pat, can you hear me? Yes, keep the applause coming in. Yes, thank you. Hello, Pat, I can hear you. Hi there, thanks, Hunter. Um, and thank you to the judges, the, the board, and the staff at Alberta Emerald Foundation and to Capital Power for this really lovely award. I am pleased to join you today from the traditional territories of the Blackfoot and the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta. Alberta Ecotrust works across the entire province and I acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit people who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. Indigenous ways teach us that we are part of the ecosystem, not masters of it. The same land and the same water have been sustaining people for centuries and, and we must protect and cherish these systems that give us life and many different kinds of both sustenance and prosperity. How can we not listen to the Indigenous people, knowledge keepers and elders who have lived on this land long before the rest of our ancestors made their way here? I believe the best way forward for the environmental community for so many reasons is to embrace a too wide way of seeing. I recently listened to Ariel Duranger at the um, Environment Funders Canada conference and her recommendation to us was to relinquish our current perspectives and open our hearts to the culture and solutions found in Indigenous communities because they do have time-tested solutions. This is happening in Alberta, but more, even all of us need to move in this direction. That's a thought I want to leave with all of you. We have to find ways to do our work with, alongside, and following the lead of Indigenous communities in the best ways we can. Before I can talk about my own journey, I, I need to thank and acknowledge the people I've worked with from the early years of Albert Ecotrust right up to today. I can't thank all of them, but I'll start with thanking my incredible teammates for their nomination and for securing the participation of so many people who wrote letters in support of this beautiful award. Going back to the early days, I've come to see the creation of Alberta Ecotrust as one of the province's first social innovations. We didn't have that language in 1991, but and I wasn't here in 1991, I, I joined a few years later, but there was no in, end in sight on the journey to shape and change people's lives in their pursuit of healthy ecosystems across the province. I'm here today because an amazing woman named Margaret Chandler saw in me a kindred environmental feminist spirit. And we, we remain dear friends to this day. A big thanks to the women who laid, laid the cornerstone of this foundation, Rose Benny, who was the original executive director, and Hazel Gillespie from Petro Canada and Kim Sanderson, <clears throat> sorry, from the Pemina Institute, who worked tirelessly behind the scenes, getting this organization off the ground. The founders of Alberta Ecotrust created space for so many people like me, who saw something rather magnificent in the notion of, uh, sorry, cross-sectoral trust, collaboration, and 
cooperative community investment, meeting in the middle to learn together, to find common ground and solution space to work on the environmental challenges faced by people in all sectors, not just nonprofits and charities. I've learned through this, it's not, an org it's not organizations who make change, it's people. Like many of you, I always wish I could have done more, sustained more things, moved more needles. I was never one for doing things the easy way. I always wanted to do things the best way I could, moving around the boulders. That said, I always worked with the end in mind, but tried to keep things as nimble as possible. I'm a big believer in strategy. I believe you should always be able to answer the questions of why and to what end are you doing this or that. Strategy comes first, but at the end of the day, it's the resulting action that matters. And I was never really focused on my job description per se, but rather on my role and, and how I and my team could contribute to the impact of Alberta Equitrust programs and deliver on our mission of inspiring and mobilizing those who champion the environment. I'm an ideas person. I can hold big ideas in my head and map systems in my mind. In fact, my brain is a series of maps and layers that always move, it never really shuts off. And this drives some people crazy. I have to really concentrate on the straight line from here to there that many people focus on. And we all have different ways to make things happen. As an organizational leader and in some ways a community leader, I never lose sight of how things are connected and how the many actors and entities in this system, in these systems that we work in influence and drive or constrain each other. That said, I also have lots of ideas that don't work or won't work or that don't fit the current frame or strategy and that's okay. Uh, for every uh, 300 ideas, there's usually one good one and there's no shortage of ideas in our world. I embrace my imperfection, and my advice here is to believe in yourself and to be persistent. Um, what is the biggest difference we can make with the resources that we have, and how do we stretch what we have just a little bit more to make just a little bit more of a difference? These are my ongoing questions. So instead of doing the hard things off the side of my desk, I made a decision at some point in my career to focus on the big things first, the big rocks and to fill the rest of my space with the other important items that always need attention to. Otherwise, there's no room for the big rocks, the game changers. It's not a perfect approach, but with a team effort, everything gets done. Since this is a lifetime award, I can safely age myself by saying that I joined the foundation when it was four years old and it's now 30 this year, just like the Emerald Foundation. Some of you will remember back in the day when we used fax machines and desk phones to communicate. Imagine faxing your newsletter to hundreds or thousands of members. The internet was not accessible. There was no Google, no social media, no websites, no smartphones, no Zoom, just people getting to know and trust each other. Today, there are infinite ways and tools to make connecting and reaching out easier, but this can't be done alone. And I believe more coordinated efforts have the biggest chance for moving the needle. We've all seen some brilliant examples from the past year, and I think the Defend Alberta Parks campaign is the best I've ever seen in Alberta. I am proud of many things I've accomplished or worked on these past 25 years, and this includes the growth we've seen and the real transformation of our opportunities to address big challenges like ecosystem protection and climate change. I'm proud of the sector research we've done starting in 2003 with maximizing effectiveness and our most recent survey reports on navigating the future. I'm proud of our contribution to sector capacity and incorporating new approaches like collective impact grants and social innovation labs. Project Blue Thumb was the first watershed focused innovation lab in Canada. And I think it was a game changer for the Red Deer River watershed and the Alliance. It was for us as well. In the last few years, I'm really proud of the work we did co-leading the Alberta Narratives Project and the Canadian Climate Narratives Project. But the pinnacle here is the successful creation of the Climate Innovation Fund and the $43.4 million investment from the federal government. That would not have happened without our past success and the incredible contribution of Rod Ruff and Mike Melross. I would say that my biggest strength over the years was that I never lost sight of the big picture. I always worked toward 
a big vision, an ambitious vision, and it was just never really easy, but it was fun. And it was so exciting when things worked and when things came together. And even though I'm standing up here on this stage alone, I didn't get here by myself. In the last 25 years, I've had the good fortune to work with and learn from so many amazing people. You don't get to my position alone. I stand on the shoulders of so many incredible people. Many are here today. And as Natalie Odd, my uh, old colleague, can confirm, there are many promances that come along on this journey. You know, those professional colleagues or speakers that you encounter once or many times that invite you in, that provoke you in some way, make you think, make you question everything, or even validate your own ideas and work. Essentially, they inspire you. And I have lots of them. In summary, for those of you working in this sector, my advice is to open your hearts and find a way to work with Indigenous communities in ways that make sense to them. Stop focusing on the small things, working on the big things off the side of your desk because it's too hard, it takes too much money and takes a lot of precious time. People will push back, I know that from experience, but I persisted on the big wins in my career. Keep focusing on the whole system. Know where you are in the systems, on the landscapes you work in. Find others to amplify and lift you up like the Defend of Verde Parks folks did. Stand up for what you believe in and don't point fingers and complain. Finally, keep in mind that ecosystems are also part of social and economic systems. And you need to multi-solve and look for co-benefits in your work. Look beyond the borders of the Anglo sector and find allies all over the communities that you live and work in. Always keep equity at the forefront of your work. We have been too singular as a sector and we need more diversity of cultures, skills, thinking and experience. I've just been blessed with some amazingly strong and long-term friendships across the country and across Alberta who have lifted me up and who have inspired me so much. I have been more fortunate than many in always working with astonishingly wonderful and smart people over the years. And each and every one of them taught me something important and something valuable. You all know it takes a lot. It takes a lot out of you to work in a way that always feels like it's uphill and like you don't have quite enough of everything you need in your toolkit to get there. And so I pay tribute here to the people in the community, like all of those who have won awards today, who have done this heavy lifting and who have we have supported through grants, who, we, who have collaborated on our projects, served on our committees and board. I think I have the best board of directors right now that, that than we've ever had. It just gets better every, every go around. I pay tribute also to the people in the Anglo community who have worked so hard and put their heart and soul and skin in this game of life as an environmentalist. If I leave any kind of legacy to the people who have helped build this great foundation, I must from the bottom of my heart thank my team for initiating this nomination and those champions who wrote such amazing letters. I will tell you honestly, from the bottom of my heart, that reading the nomination and those letters was the biggest prize I've ever had. It was such a powerful pat on the back and we we leaders just don't get enough of those. It was, it was pretty special. So I end with thanking all of them, my team, Vicki Stroich and Tegan Kopeck, Simon Irving, Katie Michaels, Dana Marashi, Jessica Lajoie, Stephanie Drozda, Mike Melross and my personal support system of Oksana Makovic and Rod Ruff. My champions, you all know that I love you and count you as a big part of my journey to acquire knowledge and wisdom and impact. Dana Duke, Paul Godman, Natalie Odd, Lori Hewson, and Rod Ruff with extra support from Mark Bennett. And finally, I'm grateful for the patience, support, and understanding of my family. I couldn't have been the mother that I was without doing what I did at Ecotrust and playing the role that I played in the community. And I'm so proud of each of my children for your contribution as change makers in your own right. Thank you all. This has been really amazing. Thank you, Pat.
Thank you so much. Congratulations, and just please soak in all the adoration that you're getting. Uh, there's been like nonstop love and, and emojis <laughs> your way. So please, thank you so much for all of this incredible work. Hi, hi. Thank you. Wonderful. Everyone, please give a round of applause to all our recipients. Thank you so much for all that you've done to make where we live work and play a safe and clean place. Congratulations. To wrap up our time together, I have the pleasure of introducing Nisha Patel, Edmonton's Poet Laureate. When you dig up the base of a wild rose, even the smallest of roots will regrow. The calling card of the boreal forest is tenacious. And we, the children of our ancestors' children, answer to the bushes in everything we do. We could have succumbed to environmental collapse or given in to the despairs of time wasted. But some have heard change call our names, pushed education and research to its limits. We've planted solar farms and harvested harmful air pollutants, integrated wastewater and built healthy food systems climate science and practices are scaled up from trial to implementation and the web of our actions are tangled rose stems overlapping and protecting one another our industries all have one thing in common we're tackling environmental remediation together i wish for greener skies yellow suns, the water in the whisper of the Saskatchewan running free. I wish for cattails in the wetland growing strong, the pond a welcome return for geese, the rain recycled from tongue to meet ocean once again. I wish to remember that we are a part of something bigger than me, so why not dream bigger than me too? Even a child knows how to hold the seeds of the dandelion in a small but powerful fist. Hold the answer close without crushing, knows that hope is a deep breath let out as a want and a wish. There's so much at stake, there is so much to be asked of you and your hands, of you and your hearts. So use them both in equal measure because on our own, our minds are lonely places full of answers made solutions, so be a solution. See the problems and face the challenge with a magpie's attention and speak with the robin's throat at dawn. Sleep heavy like the beaver at rest with the weight of opportunity to make a home out of impossibility with each new morning's crest. The hips of a wild rose stay on stem through the winter, ready to bud come the spring. And we know the snow has melted on land that needs us more than ever. The clock is ticking, the time is now for us to wake up and start to flower. Thank you, Nisha, and thank you to everyone for celebrating with us and being a part of our story this evening. Give yourselves a pat on the back, give yourself a, a, your, your friends a pat on the back, pet your cat. You're all welcome to stick around, of course, and chat with the shortlist recipients and all those who joined us during our networking event. As well, thank you once again to our esteemed dignitaries and the sponsors who made this all possible in the first place. In the coming months, the AEF will be creating some exciting content, highlighting the story behind each recipient to share their story with the province and beyond. So we'll see you all next year. Congrats, everyone.